Let's cut to the chase, have an honest conversation, and develop real answers. As a matter of fact, with Andrew Cuomo. Sometimes it's important to talk about a topic that no one is talking about. Sometimes it's important to talk about it just because no one else is talking about it. And sometimes it's important because it's about bringing attention to people and places and issues that are being ignored. It is the difficult issues that tend to be put aside. The politically contentious issues get deferred. And it's the issues about those without power, without wealth, without resources, that tend to languish. I want to talk about Puerto Rico today. Why? Because the island is in trouble and things are getting worse. And because Puerto Ricans are American citizens and they need our help. I've spent a lot of time working with Puerto Rico, first as HUD Secretary, Housing and Urban Development under Bill Clinton, and then as Governor of New York. We worked with Puerto Rico specifically in disasters, but also on an ongoing basis. The Puerto Rican community is a major asset to this nation, and the island has much potential. It's not just a question of doing more, but actually doing better. Because the mismanagement and mistreatment of Puerto Rico by our federal government is a big part of the problem. Puerto Rico has the highest poverty rates in the nation and some of the highest inequality indices in the world. The population on the island is about 3 million, and there are close to 5.5 million Puerto Ricans living in the United States. Puerto Rico has been declining for years. People are leaving. The Puerto Rico population is getting smaller, older, and poorer. Now, there are a number of issues that are causing the decline, and they are interrelated. The status of Puerto Rico as a territory means it has no federal representation. And there's been a long debate as to whether Puerto Rico should be a state, independent, if it should remain a territory. It is a very hot topic. It is divisive. And in many ways, it is a distraction to the current solutions for the island. The status issue has to be resolved. In my opinion, it's not going to be resolved anytime soon. And we can't wait to resolve the status issue to start to attend to the problems Puerto Rico is dealing with today. Next, the local governments of Puerto Rico have had a history of corruption issues. That is a fact. And there is no doubt that when this federal government provides assistance to Puerto Rico, financial supervision is necessary. Next, Puerto Rico, from an economic point of view, is effectively bankrupt. It suffered from the 2000 recession and then again in the 2013 economic slowdown. 2018-2019 was the only year of economic growth in the past decade. Puerto Rico has approximately $70 billion in debt, which is a staggering amount for their GDP. Their infrastructure is in terrible shape. The power grid is unreliable, uh, and, and that is a nice comment. And it's the most expensive power in the United States of America. The water system is also unreliable. And if that wasn't enough, on top of all of that, Mother Nature has not been kind to Puerto Rico, which has suffered from major storms over the past five years. The worst being Hurricane Maria in 2017, which truly devastated the island. Puerto Rico still hasn't recovered from the damage of Maria. So as they say, it's complicated. But the important issues are always complicated. I never dealt with a truly important issue that wasn't complicated. And when government says, well, it's complicated and therefore we're not going to deal with it, that's exactly wrong. 
It is the difficult ones that are complicated, and it is the difficult issues that government should be addressing. And yes, they are always complicated. Passing marriage equality was complicated. Passing a $15 minimum wage, which was the highest in the nation, was complicated. Building an airport, building a bridge, building a subway. These are all complicated things. But that is why we have government, to do the hard things. And in this case, our federal government is actually making it more complicated. The federal government is extensively involved throughout Puerto Rico's governance. In fact, the federal government has adopted what I call the octopus approach. They have tentacles in virtually every aspect of Puerto Rico's governance. And the federal government does it with little coordination strategy or plan. You have a federal judge who is dealing with Puerto Rico's finances through what is essentially a bankruptcy proceeding. You also have a fiscal oversight board that has been put in place, which is responsible for managing finances of Puerto Rico and is actually above, in many ways, the governor of Puerto Rico. The federal aid that is then awarded to Puerto Rico is managed by several separate federal agencies, primarily FEMA and HUD. But each agency manages funding through its own bureaucracy with little coordination with the other federal agencies. Each one is in their own silo, as they say. This fragmented, disconnected intervention has never worked. Of the approximately $60 billion awarded five years ago after Maria, how much do you think has actually been dispersed? Only 2%. That's where we are today.